Thank you for joining me for today's online travel presentation, where we talk about inspiring destinations and itineraries perfect for 2022 travel. My name is Lynn, and I'm pleased to be your presenter today. Here we are, three weeks into the new year. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm itching to travel. A new year brings the desire to start filling up our calendars and making plans. And when it comes to your next vacation, at the start of the year, the possibilities just seem endless. So let's consider the options in our own backyard, so to speak, um, from Alaska's wide open spaces to the legendary national parks that dot the continental US and bustling cities like LA and Chicago and New York City, all connected by iconic rail journeys. Let's cast the net a little wider. Canada is a favorite destination year over year. They're ready for travelers to return to them and they have some bucket list destinations and experiences to put on your list. Consider the Canadian Rockies, French Canada, in particular, Quebec City and Montreal and the charming towns of Atlantic Canada. And if you're ready to dust off your passport, what about Europe or even further beyond? Whether you're thinking about the UK's historic cities or if you want to explore the Swiss Alps, um, taste your way across Italy or sail along the Blue Danube, there are extensive choices here too. So then we ask ourselves, do you want to set your own pace or do you prefer something more choreographed? Vacations by rail itineraries um, are ideal for any type of traveler, whether you prefer to travel independently or with a small group. And we're going to cover some of our most popular as well as a few great new trips during this session. So before we get started though, um, I'd like to launch our first polling question. And it is, do you prefer to travel independently or on an escorted tour? So we're going to keep this open for about 30 seconds to give everyone a chance to participate. Okay, it looks like everyone has had a chance to lodge their um, vote. So we're going to close the poll. And um, wow, nearly half of you prefer to travel with a small group of travelers, which means the other prefer independent travel. I think that um, you're both in the right place because today's featured itineraries offer great inspiration for both travel styles. Um, so uh, the itineraries we're going to talk about today um, feature a mix of independent and escorted. They cover popular destinations in both the USA, Canada, and Europe. Um, like those pins in the map, um, let's go ahead and start planning where we're going to go for 2022. So let's start in Alaska. Um, it's a state known as the last frontier. And interestingly enough, that's because of both its distance from the lower 48 states, as well as its untamed wilderness. So this is the place for incredible scenery, wildlife spotting, and some pretty unique adventures. Um, Alaska really boomed in popularity last year as a place for safe domestic travel, plenty of outdoor adventures, and a variety of off the beaten path itineraries. And for those interested in traveling with a small group of travelers to Alaska, and you're led by um, a professional tour manager, so you just need to you know, show up for the trip and just enjoy as we go through the itinerary, you're not gonna wanna look any further than this tour right here, Alaska the Great Land. So this is a nine day escorted tour, starting in Fairbanks and ending in Anchorage. And there are a variety of set departure dates you can choose from during the spring and summer months. And there they are on that left-hand column. Um, we begin in Fairbanks with two hotel nights and travel from Fairbanks to Denali in Gold, Gold Star class. And there you have this train line right here. 
Um, Gold Star Service is a memorable journey on the Alaska Railroad's flagship route. Your onboard experience is highlighted by large dome glass windows that run the full length of the car and allow for excellent 360 degree viewing. Um, you're going to have a reserved seat in the upper level dome and priority seating in the lower level dining room. After two nights in the Denali Bluffs Hotel, we continue south by train to Talkeetna on the Denali Star. But this time we're in adventure class. So what's really great about this itinerary is you get to experience both classes of service. Um, adventure class offers comfortable accommodations as well, this time beside a large picture window where you can soak in amazing views of Denali's south face on a clear day and cross the summit of the Continental Divide. After one night in Talkeetna, we transfer by motor coach to Anchorage and then travel to the Kenai Peninsula in two nights in Seward. Our adventures while in this part of Alaska aren't quite as wooded, they're actually more coastal in nature and um, we're doing a lot of marine wildlife encounters. Uh, from Seward, we return by coach to Whittier and take Alaska Railroad's um, Glacier Discovery train back to Anchorage for our last overnight hotel. So here are some images of what you can expect to see. Kenai Fjords National Park right here. I love this image. Um, Prince William Sound and Denali National Park. Those are the top three images. And the bottom three are the Alaska Railroad, um, onboard accommodations and adventure class, and the Surprise Glacier, which is one of the glaciers we visit on the Prince William Sound and Surprise Glacier tour. So this escorted tour covers a good deal of ground on the route from Fairbanks to our Anchorage. Um, some of the highlights on this tour include three days of rail travel on the Alaska Railroad, including that Gold Star service on the Denali Star from Fairbanks to Denali. In Fairbanks, we take a three hour riverboat discovery tour along the Chena and Tanana rivers and uncover Alaskan culture with a visit to Chena Indian Village. We stay for two nights at the Denali Bluffs Hotel, and we have really great scenic riverview rooms, and the accommodations themselves are, have excellent proximity to Denali National Park. And also, while we're staying right outside Denali, um, we have the chance to immerse ourselves in some of the park's natural history on a guided tour. Um, other highlights include um, a tram ride to the top of Mount Alyeska, and at the top, there's a viewing platform that offers incredible, um, incredible scenes of hanging glaciers and streams and an array of wildlife. And then in Kenai Fjords National Park, we take a cruise to get an up-close look at glaciers and observe the marine life, including sea otters and sea lions. Um, but there's one more cruise while we're down in that part of Alaska. We also get to take a cruise on Prince William Sound for a chance to see whales and seals. And then we travel to um, spot some of those tidewater glaciers, including Surprise Glacier. So overall, if you're looking for an insider's perspective of Alaska, um, this is the tour for you. I really like this one. But for a shorter independent exploration of Alaska, consider the Alaska Wilderness Tour. This is a seven day independent vacation, which means that you're following a well-planned itinerary. All of your rail, hotel, and sightseeing are arranged for you. And you travel at your own pace, seeing and doing those things that are most important to you. Um, there's multiple departures from May through September, and it's a perfect adventure on its own, or if you have a cruise already planned, it's a great pre or post package for a cruise. So for this itinerary, we start with one night in Anchorage and then go north on the Alaska Railroad with one night in Talkeetna, two nights in Denali, and we end with two nights in Fairbanks. Because this is an independent package, if you, you can choose if you want Adventure Class or Gold Star Dome service on the Denali Star Train. This itinerary can be a lot more flexible and customizable, and your rail specialist can assist you with adding any of those customizations. Um, here are some sites from the vacation. On the top right, we have Denali National Park, and the below and on to the left, some wildlife you can see on this itinerary. On the bottom, you'll see the Denali Star Train, onboard accommodations on the train, and these are the onboard accommodations in Gold Star Service. And um, that last image on the bottom right is the Riverboat Discovery, which is the paddle steamer excursion you take in Fairbanks. 
let's talk about some of the highlights of this trip. Um, obviously, those three days of rail travel on the Alaska Railroad in whichever class of service you choose, excellent opportunities to see wildlife throughout the entire tour. And we've arranged for a Talkeetna jet boat excursion on the Talkeetna and Susitna rivers. Um, you have those backcountry adventures in Denali National Park and that cruise on the Riverboat Discovery paddle steamer, which includes the visit to the Chena Indian Village. It's a great itinerary for nature enthusiasts in particular. Um, it really gets down to the core of Alaska's well-preserved wildlife, and it gives you a chance to study them up close and personal. Um, this is just a taste of the independent explorations in Alaska. Vacations by Rail offers more than 25 independent itineraries in the state, all of which include great rail journeys on Alaska's flagship route, but also some that include cruises or car rentals for more off the beaten path discoveries. This next tour is new for 2022. It includes visits to three popular national parks and it's steeped in Western nostalgia. It's called Glacier, Yellowstone and Jackson. This is an 11 day escorted tour through Big Sky Country. And it's really a best of the West adventure that includes visits to Jackson Hole, Grand Teton National Park, Big Sky Country, um, Yellowstone National Park and Glacier National Park. Um, the itinerary begins here in Chicago, uh, where you meet your tour manager and board the Empire Builder for the overnight journey west to Montana. Now, if you're based on the West Coast, you can pick up the eastbound train in Seattle and meet your group and tour manager in East Glacier, Montana on day two. Um, so, East Glacier is located on the edge of Glacier National Park, and we stay here for two nights to get to know the crown of the continent. While you're here, we'll board a vintage Red Jammer bus for a ride along one of America's most famous roadways called the Going to the Sun Road. And um, it's a, it offers a great tour of Glacier National Park. Uh, when we depart Glacier National Park, we do so by deluxe motor coach and we head to Helena where we stay for two nights. So while, while we're here, we're going to visit the Charles Russell Museum. Charles Russell was an artist who depicted scenes of the American West in his artwork. And a visit to this museum complex shows off not just his paintings and sketches, but his home and his log studio. Um, so that's a really unique excursion. Also, while we're in Helena, we're gonna tour the state capitol and there's a cruise through the gates of the mountains. So then it's time to visit Yellowstone. And um, we spent three nights in Yellowstone National Park. And we have some guided touring that shows off some of the most famous sites, um, in, including Old Faithful, of course. And there's still ample time to discover sites on your own as well. So it's a really good balance of both um, planned guided uh, touring and time at leisure. When we depart Yellowstone, it's by Deluxe Motor Coach found for Jackson, Wyoming. And Jackson is situated um, it's, it's, its location in Wyoming is really the gateway to Grand Teton National Park. It is really just located outside that perimeter. It's also a really charming cowboy town. Um, it has wooden plank sidewalks and saloons and really cute shops. Um, we're gonna overnight in Jackson for two nights and our daytime excursions are going to take us into Grand Teton National Park for a relaxing float trip on the Snake River. And then we also have some entertainment included. Um, we're gonna go to the local rodeo. So this trip through Big Sky Country is a great chance to see the West's natural wonders, soak up lots of its rich history, and also catch a glimpse of some, some roaming wildlife if we're lucky. Uh, let's review some of the highlights of this new tour. We visit Glacier National Park and take a trip along the Going to the Sun Road aboard vintage Red Jammer buses. Um, so that's really a, a, a spectacular excursion. Um, we stop at Charles Russell's home and studio, which is very unique. We cruise through the gates of the mountains, and it's that, that particular location is nestled between Yellowstone and Glacier National Park. Um, and it, it really showcases gorgeous scenery. Uh, we explore Yellowstone on our own and on guided excursions. Uh, we get to learn more about the cowboy lifestyle with a visit to the famous Jackson Hole Rodeo. 
And we get that relaxing float trip along the Snake River through Grand Teton National Park. And this, this offers not just a unique perspective on the park, but a new vantage point to spot some wildlife. So it's a great escorted exploration of some of America's great national parks. And if you want to travel independently, we have a new vacation for that too. And it's the California Zephyr with Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. This is a nine day independent itinerary. It begins in Chicago and ends in San Francisco. And there are many departures between May and October. So you can select the time that works best for you and your vacation schedule. So on this itinerary, we begin in Chicago where you board the California Zephyr for the overnight journey west. When you awake on day two, the Zephyr is approaching the Colorado Rockies. And you know, the scenery on this particular route, it's always changing and always interesting, but this is where it really becomes striking. So you'll wanna be near your picture window or in the train sightseer lounge car to get the very best views. And day two is just full of spectacular scenery um, in the Rocky Mountains. Um, that evening, we're going to arrive in Salt Lake City and you'll depart the train and transfer to your hotel for a really good rest. And then on day three, you're gonna wake up and you're in control of your schedule um, and the pace of this itinerary. So you're going to pick up your rental car and start your explorations. Um, we suggest taking some time to explore Salt Lake City as long as you're there, maybe um, stop at the Mormon Temple or visit the state capitol. Uh, no matter where you decide to stop and explore, uh, the destination for the day is um, Jackson, Wyoming. So when you arrive in Jackson, the remainder of the day is free to explore the town. Um, we talked about it in our last tour. Jackson is this cute cowboy town. It has plenty of shops, good restaurants, and some saloons to explore that evening. And the next day, you're going to be bound for Yellowstone. But as luck would have it, the route takes you straight through Grand Teton National Park. So it's a nice leisurely drive through, through really incredible scenery. And we really suggest taking some time to stop and admire the, the mountains and, and the lakes within uh, Grand Teton National Park on your way to Yellowstone. Now, you're going to enter Yellowstone in order to get to your accommodations situated just outside the confines of the park. So be sure to take advantage of the chance to see some of its scenic wonders, including West Thumb Geyser Basin. This may be one of the smallest geyser basins in the park, but its location along Lake Yellowstone also makes it one of the most scenic. So it's definitely something to, to stop and admire on your way uh, to your accommodations in West Yellowstone. So now you're at Yellowstone National Park and you have full, two full days to explore. And to give you an idea of what you might encounter, consider that Yellowstone is the largest active geyser field in the world. And when we think of geysers, I'm sure you're thinking what I'm thinking, Old Faithful. Um, Old Faithful erupts pretty regularly, so you'll want to make sure you plan a visit to that site. And there's also many colorful hot springs and pools in Yellowstone National Park, um, like the Grand Prismatic Hot Spring, Mammoth Hot Springs, and Norris Geyser Basin. Those are some of the most famous or, or at least well-known ones. Um, there's also plenty of waterfalls and lakes to see and more than 1,300 miles of trails. So if you're into hiking, I mean, there's plenty to choose from. Um, but overall, we can't talk about Yellowstone without mentioning the wildlife. It's kind of the main event. Um, the park is home to grizzly and black bears, bison, elk, wolves, and coyotes, to name just a few. And something you may want to consider is taking your car rental on a drive through Hayden Valley. Um, Hayden Valley is where the the bison roam. So um, you'll definitely want to head out there for the opportunity to see more bison than you know what to do with. On day seven, you're, you, you're going to uh, drive back to Salt Lake City, return in your rental car, and board the California Zephyr for the continued journey west to San Francisco. And this is where the journey concludes, but if you'd like to extend your stay and explore more, um, maybe add another national park to the trip um, with an excursion to Yosemite, um, it's always a possibility. 
So um, because it's an independent vacation, it is highly customizable and any of our rail specialists would be happy to assist you with, with extending your stay or adding more to your trip to meet your travel goals. So some of the highlights of this itinerary are the scenic drives through America's West. All at your leisure as you travel independently. Um, in Grand Teton National Park, you're going to see the awe-inspiring Teton Range. Um, it's, it's claimed to fame as it rises to the sky without foothills. Um, in Yellowstone, you're going to discover all of its natural wonders from geysers to fumaroles. Now, earlier we talked about Glacier National Park. It's a popular summertime destination and is located directly off a rail line, um, Amtrak's Empire Builder. The national parks and the railroads have a long history. Um, as a result, Vacations by Rail has a whole collection of rail vacations to America's national parks, and many include visits to Glacier, um, both as part of an itinerary or as the main attraction. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you to this new one. It just launched last week. It's a new rail and drive vacation, and it's called, funnily enough, Glacier National Park Rail and Drive. So I'll talk about the one that travels round trip from Chicago. Um, there is one that travels round trip Seattle as well. So if that is logistically what works best for you based on your location, do know it is available. So this is a seven day independent vacation that includes round trip travel on Amtrak's Empire Builder, a three day full size car rental and a four night stay in Whitefish, which is the gateway to Glacier National Park. So we're going to begin in Chicago, where our classic overnight rail journey takes you through Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, and into Montana. And when you um, depart the train in Whitefish after that scenic journey through the northern prairies, you're going to make your way to your hotel and rest up for the adventure to come in neighboring Glacier National Park. So on day three, you're going to pick up your rental car and start to explore the area at your leisure. Um, Whitefish in particular is a charming resort town and you may wish to start there, um, but the pinnacles of your trip come with your included excursions in Glacier National Park. Um, and you're gonna be able to dive into those in the coming days. So um, those included excursions include a Red Jammer bus tour of the park along the Going to the Sun Road, as well as a wooden boat cruise on Lake McDonald. And Lake McDonald is known for its incredibly clear waters. You can see all the way down to the bottom, and it is known for having these really colorful stones um, that make up the, the bottom of the, the lake. Both of these tours will give you great insight into the park and show off some of its highlights for you. But outside of those included excursions, there's ample time to explore on your own as well. So you're going to want to carve out time to see and do what you like at your own pace. And you have that freedom of that car rental. So, I mean, really, you can explore further afield if you like. Um, it, it's, it's really nice flexibility. Um, you're going to return to back to Chicago by train following the same route you took to get to, to Glacier National or get to Whitefish in Glacier National Park, which means one more overnight on the Empire Builder, uh, which is a great classic overnight rail adventure. Without a doubt, highlights of this new itinerary include crossing the Continental Divide on a drive along the famous Going to the Sun Road. You're aboard a 1930s era Red Jammer bus with this roll rollback um, canvas top, and it's it's really really a, a fun excursion, and of course that historic wooden boat cruise on Lake McDonald. I also think discovering the charming town of Whitefish is really special. Um, we we don't often stay there um, for we we do on some escorted tours, but this is the first on an independent rail vacation. So um, it's, I'm I'm excited about that aspect. Let's stay west of the Mississippi River for a little longer because there's one destination here that is outstanding for a rail vacation that we've not yet talked about. Um, it has many heritage and scenic trains, and just last year it welcomed America's newest luxury train for its inaugural season. I'm talking about Colorado and the Colorado Rockies in particular. Um, it is a fantastic destination for train aficionados, history buffs, nature lovers, and really travelers of all varieties. 
And for a first class Colorado experience, I'm going to tell you about our first class Colorado rail adventure featuring Rocky Mountaineer. This is a nine day escorted rail tour that begins and ends in Denver and offers fantastic railway excursions and touring along the way. On this trip, you'll experience the newly reopened and refurbished Pikes Peak Cog Railway, the Royal Gorge Route Railroad, the Cumbre and Toltec Scenic Railroad, the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad, and the luxurious all daylight Rocky Mountaineer traveling its new United States route, Rockies to the Red Rocks. So while we ride the rails, railroad experts and knowledgeable guides will introduce us to the mining and railway history of the state, and of course, any points of interest we're passing along the way. So Denver is both the beginning and ending point for this expedition. Um, and in between, we travel the destinations throughout the state and in neighboring Utah by train and deluxe motor coach. So um, we get to enjoy time in Colorado Springs. And here we're discovering the rock formations at Garden of the Gods. And we're climbing to the summit of Pikes Peak aboard the Manitou and Pikes Peak Cog Railway. And from here, we make our way to Canyon City to ride the Royal Gorge Route Railroad and then to Southern Colorado for an excursion on the Cumbre and Toltec Scenic Railroad, which is known for weaving between Colorado and New Mexico um, about 11 times on that route. Um, next, we go to Durango, which is a town created by the railway and home to the famous Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. Um, we're also going to experience first class accommodations on that train before crossing the Colorado Utah border to Moab. Um, here we visit nearby Arches National Park, and here's a, a, a great image of that right here. Um, and in, in arches, it's known for having more than 2,000 sandstone arches and, and um, windcrafted um, buttes and, and st standing balls. Um, and you're going to be able to see all of those rock formations on an excursion there. Um, it's also in Moab where we board the luxurious daylight-only Rocky Mountaineer for the two-day all-daylight rail journey back to Denver on their new Rockies to the Red Rocks route. And then our tour concludes in Denver. So there's no better way to immerse yourself in gold rush lore and relish the secluded scenes of the Rocky Mountains than this itinerary. It is packed with exciting excursions and activities, and of course, fantastic rail journeys. So um, let's review some of the highlights. It's, uh, we have that scenic rail adventure to the summit of Pikes Peak aboard the Pikes Peak Cog Railway. We have a Royal Gorge Route Railroad trip. It includes a three course lunch in the elegant parlor car and access to the open air gondola car. We have a ride aboard the Cumbre and Toltec Scenic Railroad in a beautifully restored rail car. We have a rail journey on the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad in the first class Silver Vista car. Two days of all daylight rail travel on Rocky Mountaineer on the new Rockies to the Red Rocks route. Um, we're going to visit the Colorado Rail Museum for a docent led tour. We're going to see the rock formations in Garden of the Gods. And some of those rock formations tower more than 300 feet in the air. And then we're going to visit Arches National Park and get, you know, check out all of those great rock formations and see um, the most famous one, which is Delicate Arch. So, I promised that we'd highlight itineraries outside the United States, um, and we definitely have time for that. So let's cross the border to Canada and talk about one of our popular independent rail vacations in Western Canada. It's Canadian Rockies featuring Banff and Lake Louise. This is a seven day rail vacation, it is independent, and it showcases Western Canada's gorgeous scenery at every turn. On this journey, we have included two nights in Vancouver, along with a hop on hop off tour to get acquainted with that coastal city, as well as overnights and sightseeing in the Canadian Rockies. So let's take a closer look at some snapshots from the trip, as well as some special highlights. Our journey begins in Vancouver. And as I mentioned, we have a hop on hop off tour included, as well as plenty of time to explore on our own. 
Now, the half and half half tour also can double as your transportation around the city. It's going to take you to more than 30 points of interest across Vancouver. And of course, you can step on and step off to explore those points of interest. And, and like I said, use, use that um, hop on hop off vehicle as your, as your mode of transportation around town. Um, some of the stops include Granville Island, Robson Street, which is known for its um, shopping, and Gastown. On day three, you board Rocky Mountaineer for the two-day all-day light journey into the Canadian Rockies, arriving in Lake Louise on day four. Now, when you get to Lake Louise, take time um, both that evening as well as the morning of day five to enjoy this alpine hamlet. Um, no visit here is complete without a visit to the stunning turquoise waters. Um, there's that massive Victoria Glacier that looms behind it and the iconic Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, which is situated along its shores. Um, it's, it's just a, a stunning, iconic property. Um, and guests who travel in our deluxe level of service on this itinerary stay at that amazing hotel. Um, otherwise, and anyone is always more than welcome to visit there. Um, it's really something special. Your journey is going to continue on day five to Banff by way of a scenic coach transfer. And in Banff, we've arranged some sightseeing to ensure the you can see the best of the town and its national park. Um, some of the highlights include um, Cave and Basin National Historic Site that is um, home to the hot springs that made Banff famous and a ride on the Banff gondola for the journey to the top of Sulphur Mountain. And at the top of Sulphur Mountain, there is this viewing platform that where you can look out onto the Bow Valley, which you can start to see it here. Um, it's, it's even more spectacular when you're at the top of the platform. Um, you can see the Bow Valley and even parts of um, Banff Town Site. Um, it's really very impressive. And on day seven, you transfer to Calgary for your return home. This is one of our most popular itineraries vacationers choose when planning their Rocky Mountain getaway. Um, all of the must-see attractions of the Canadian Rockies are included in this week-long itinerary. Now let's travel east to Canada's Maritimes and a special escorted tour of the region, Quebec to the Maritimes, featuring Via's Ocean. You can immerse yourself in the coastal beauty of Eastern Canada and enjoy um, uh, historics from everything from the historic center of Quebec City. You're traveling through New Brunswick to Nova Scotia and out to Prince Edward Island, where Scottish culture really does come to life. So you're traveling from French inspired cities to Scottish inspired cities um, in, a, in a really classic overnight rail adventure in between. Um, so Canada's Atlantic coastline, it has a lot to offer. It has wineries, national parks charming towns, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and it's all yours to discover on this 12-day tour. It is escorted, which means you're traveling with a small group of travelers and you're led by a professional tour manager. Um, there are departures here, both summer and fall. So um, some of the scenery may look a little different if you go in the summer months versus during fall foliage season, but the itinerary itself stays exactly the same. We're going to begin in Quebec City. Um, Quebec City, it dates back to the early 1600s and there's much to explore there. We're gonna have some sightseeing and experience the culture of the city before we board Via Rail's Ocean. And that train is going to take us along the St. Lawrence River um, and then out to Moncton, New Brunswick uh, during the over, or Nova Scotia, sorry, during the overnight um, journey. And then it's a great opportunity to get a taste of overnight rail travel. Um, uh, it's, it's a really nice journey. Um, when we arrive, we get a true coastal adventure. We meet our deluxe motor coach and begin our discovery of the Maritimes. You were going to see Tide Swell in Hopewell Rock Park. We're going to do a ferry ride across the Bay of Fundy. We're going to see historic sites and museums and lighthouses and explore two national parks, Cape Breton Highlands and Prince Edward Island National Park. And we're also going to see the inspiration for the character of Anne of Green Gables. Um, exploring the Maritimes really has never been more exciting with highlights like 
a visit to the Arabelier Le Chemin de Roy Sugar Shack. I probably butchered that French name, but it sounds amazing because uh, here you're going to see how tapped maple sap becomes delicious maple syrup. It's a great excursion while we're in Quebec City. Our festive Sugar Shack visit also includes a traditional dinner, maple taffy treats and sleigh rides, as well as traditional Quebecois music. We're going to see the Hopewell flower pot rocks and watch the tides change at the Bay of Fundy. We're going to go on a walking tour of St. Andrews by the Sea and go wine tasting in the Annapolis, Annapolis Valley. Uh, we're going to drive Nova Scotia's lighthouse route. We're going to visit Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site. And we're going to visit Anne of Green Gables Museum. And here we'll learn the history that inspired Lucy Maud Montgomery to write her very famous book, Anne of Green Gables. And we'll have tea with the Campbells, which is a, a great local um, authentic experience and learn about their connection with the author. So our passport's in hand. And if we want to keep going, Further, let's go across the pond to Scotland, home to historic cities, the wild Scottish Highlands, and a rail journey on the train made famous by Harry Potter, uh, the Harry Potter movies. Uh, there it is on your screen. It's the Jacobite steam train. Um, and it travels along that Glenfinnan viaduct. It's a very famous imagery. Um, all of these sites and more are yours to, to see and experience firsthand. It's a traveler favorite. It's the Edinburgh Highlands and Islands tour. It's a nine day escorted tour beginning and ending in Edinburgh. Um, just a reminder, escorted means that we're traveling with others and we're joined by a tour manager from start to finish to ensure safer travel for our guests. Um, and offer really a, an unparalleled travel experience. Our tour size was reduced up to 38% in 2021. Um, many of our escorted tours in Europe, like this one, actually were reduced even further, hosting an exclusive 25 or fewer guests per departure. So really a, a, a nice small group tour. Um, as I mentioned, we begin in Edinburgh, where you can explore on your own before we travel to Glasgow. In Glasgow, we board the renowned West Highland Line and travel along the locks and past mountainscapes and through quaint villages. Uh, we leave the mainland and journey by ferry to the Isle of Mull and enjoy a visit to an ancient castle and enjoy a taste of authentic Scotch whiskey, uh, which I love that cultural experience. It's really special. Uh, we continue to uh, Neptune's staircase, we enjoy a cruise on Loch Lynn, we ride aboard the Jacobite steam train and see legendary Loch Ness. Uh, one final train ride, this time aboard the Kyle Line, takes us to Kyle of Loch Alsh, where we visit the 13th century Eileen Donan Castle. As the tour wraps up, we're back in Edinburgh um, and just surrounding ourselves with more Scottish vistas, um, quintessential Scotland. So here are on our screen some of the images that we um, will see on our trip. We have Clockwise Duart Castle. Um, this is Inverness, uh, Edinburgh, Eileen Donan Castle. This is Oban, and of course the Jacobite Steam Train. This really is a um, best of type tour of Scotland. It visits all of the important landmarks and scenic sites. Um, if you've always wanted to go to Scotland and you've really never known where to be gone or how to see and do it all, this is a, a great itinerary. Um, we, we've handpicked all of the most important landmarks and stitched them together with train travel. Um, it, it's full of great rail journeys and authentic Scottish experiences. So the last itinerary we're going to talk about is our um, best of Switzerland by rail. Um, this it's Switzerland's it's a land of wide open spaces. It has those famous Swiss Alps and it's known for its sleek trains with incredible on time performance. Um, you get to soak in the ravishing landscapes of Zurich, Lucerne, Lausanne, Zermatt and Samaritz on a 10 day escorted rail tour. And this well-planned itinerary features travel aboard six scenic trains, including the famous Glacier Express, as well as some immersive experiences that um, really showcase some of the culture of the country. 
Personally, I don't think there's a better way to see this much of Switzerland with visits to its most impressive towns than traveling aboard its sleek trains. And this round trip rail tour begins in Switzerland's largest city, which is Zurich. And here we have some free time to explore the city on our own. The following day, we embark on our first excursion, which is a train trip to nearby St. Gallen, where we can explore this charming little town. And the next day is when things really get underway. We travel from Zurich to Lucerne. Um, Lucerne's known for its medieval architecture against, the, against a backdrop of alpine scenery. Um, then we continue, our journey continues. We're gonna curve around Lake Geneva by train to Montreux, which this area is known as the Swiss Riviera. Then it's on to the mountain resort towns of Zermatt and San Moritz, and before returning to Zurich. Along the way, we spend time in charming villages. Um, we even dip in Tirano, Italy on a day trip aboard the Bernina Express. Highlights of this great tour include an eight day Swiss travel pass. And I love this highlight. It doubles as your ticket for not only getting on the train and traveling on the trains, it's also um, gives you complimentary travel on buses and boats. And um, during your free time in select destinations, consider using this pass to do some mountain excursions, or it also gives you admission to more than 500 museums. It's really a valuable inclusion. Um, of course, the scenic rail excursions woven into this trip are definite highlights as well. Um, the Glacier Express, which is famously known as the slowest express train in the world, um, the Bernina Express, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Golden Pass Panoramic, the Gorner Gart Railway, which, I mean, that is spectacular scenes of the Matterhorn as you travel up Gorner Gart Mountain. Um, it's just fantastic. And then, of course, some, some local trains, which very underrated, the Lucerne Interlochen Express and the BLS Regio Express. So now it's time for another polling question, and I'm going to go ahead and launch that. Here it is. What um what destinations are next on your vacation list so we'll keep this open for a, about 30 seconds to give you a chance to choose from some of the options on your screen Okay, let's go ahead and close this poll. And really interesting results. Um, our top answers are the Canadian Rockies and Northern Lights. Both of those are excellent choices. Um, I love it. Northern Lights are fantastic. Uh, let's see here. So to request a vacation spiral brochure or make a reservation, you can contact any of our rail specialists toll free at 877-929-7245. You can also book online at vacationsbyrail.com or download a brochure for your own personal use. Um, now it is time for some questions. We do have time for a few. So let me go ahead and pull up the first one. All right. For escorted tours using Amtrak, is there a choice of train accommodations? There are a choice of accommodations on the train when uh, for on train tours that use Amtrak. And it's not just escorted, those those same options are available for independent as well. Um, the from price we feature on, on our website, as well as you may have seen some from prices in this webinar, um, those, those um, are highlighting coach class pricing, but upgrades are available to roomette or bedroom accommodations. Um, there are a limited amount of private sleeping accommodations on each train. Uh, they do tend to sell out. So um, you'll want to talk to your rail specialist to secure those upgrades um, and make sure that, that they're available for you. How many people are on escorted tours? So 
great question. I mentioned earlier, uh, last year we reduced our escorted tour group size by up to 38%. Um, what this means, on, um, you can on North American tours, you can expect between 38 and 44 travelers on average. In Europe, the vast majority of our escorted tours are small group tours. And that means there are no more than 25 people per departure and oftentimes less. So I hope that answers that question. Um, what is included in the independent vacations? Uh, good question. Independent vacations include your rail transportation, hotel accommodations, and sightseeing, depending on the itinerary. It may also include your car rental, like our um, Glacier National Park rail and drive itinerary we talked about, as well as some transfers and some meals. Um, as, since we're talking about independent um, itineraries, one of the really great things about an independent rail vacation is they're highly customizable. So you can enhance or upgrade your itinerary to meet your vacation goals. So even though rail and hotel and um, your accommodations and some sightseeing are, are um, all of those things are, are included, they come standard, you certainly can add to it or enhance it. Um, Consider adding excursions or upgrading your room type or adding nights in destinations. Um, any of our rail specialists are happy to um, adjust or enhance or customize any of our independent itineraries to meet your travel goals. So they're really there to, to help you make the most of your vacation. All right, we have time for a couple more. Do you book airfare? Um, no, unfortunately we do not. We don't have air contracts, so we can't assist in booking your airfare. Uh, what we can do is uh, we can assist with connecting rail from your nearest train station if we're looking at, um, in, in the US in particular, if we're looking at um, USA travel. Uh, one more question. Do I sleep on the Rocky Mountaineer train that runs in the US? Um, no, the Rocky Mountaineer train is not equipped with sleeping accommodations. Um, it is an all daylight train. Um, on its route in the US, it travels between Moab and Denver. It is two days of all daylight rail travel. So at the end of day one, it stops for the night in Glenwood Springs. Um, in Glenwood Springs, you disembark the train and there's a uh, hotel night is included. So um, after you disembark the train and check into your hotel, there may be time to explore the downtown area. Um, downtown Glenwood Springs has little um, shops and eateries, and maybe there's even time to explore the hot springs that Glenwood Springs is famous for. It is a very cute um, resort town. And then the next morning, you go back to the train depot and board the train and continue the journey to Denver. So that is all the time we have for questions. Um, I know we have several others that are waiting for answers and I'm sorry we couldn't get to them here today. Please expect to hear from one of our rail specialists with a personal reply this week. So um, thank you so much for joining me for this, um, for this look at um, some inspiring itineraries and destinations for the new year of travel. Um, we hope that you have fun planning your next trips and certainly contact a rail specialist to assist you in planning your next rail vacation. Have a, a wonderful day. Thank you.